In this video, I'm offering my wine travel lessons learned for Santorini, Greece. As with my Piedmont video, I'll be offering three travel related tips and three wine related trips that you can implement immediately, even if you don't travel to Greece anytime soon. For those of you who are new to my channel, my name is John Jackson. I'm also known as Attorney Sam. I'm known as Attorney Sam because while I practice data privacy law and intellectual property law by day, when I'm not working as an attorney, I'm pursuing my passion for wine. And I do that several ways. Uh, first, I'm pursuing my WSET level four sommelier certification. I'm about two thirds done. I also have an Instagram page under attorney Sam. I've had some articles that have been published in magazines like Forbes. I've also traveled extensively to wine producing regions around the world. And so I thought this would be an excellent way to provide some value and to share some of the tips that I've learned along the way. I'm also very excited because this should be my first video in 4K. If you can tell the difference and you like the quality, uh, please let me know in the comments below. And with that, let's go ahead and get started. We'll start with my travel tips. I recommend spending at least three days in Santorini with one full day devoted to wine tasting. Specifically, I would spend one day doing a tour of the island and getting a feel for the whole island and seeing everything that it has to offer. Then I would spend another day wine tasting and then probably a third day I would just hang out in Ia, uh, taking in the sunset and just admiring some of the natural beauty and the views that you can see there. With respect to the day that you spend wine tasting, there are several outstanding options. Uh, you can get a comprehensive tour that discusses the production methods. And of course, you get to taste through the entire lineup, but they even have an Uzo distillery that's right on the island. And so you can learn about Uzo and taste some of that as well. And one of the wineries, Gaia, G-A-I-A, has their tasting room located right on the beach. And so you can enjoy the lineup while you're admiring the water and sitting on the beach, which is kind of nice. The third tip is that there's really not Uber and taxis are both very expensive and hard to come by. And so you definitely want to account for that when you're planning your trip to Santorini. Having discussed the travel tips, we'll move on to the wine related takeaways. And again, I have three wine related takeaways. My first lesson learned was that a Sirtico is an outstanding wine and can be quite good. In terms of descriptors, I typically get a lot of citrus, stone fruit, and tropical fruit with high minerality and also high acidity. They're also very, very dry wines, so there's no sweetness at all. Interesting there's a variety of different maturation methods. Some tend to use at least a certain percentage of oak when aging the wines. And while I'm not a huge fan of new oak with Chardonnay, for example, I found that with Assyrtico, I tended to enjoy most the wines that had more of the oak. And so if there's a 100% oaked Assyrtico, you might want to try that. Of course, it pairs perfectly with the seafood, which is in abundance throughout Greece and especially in Santorini. So I highly recommend that combination. And even if you go to a Greek restaurant uh, in the United States, wherever you're located, I highly recommend a Sirtico with seafood. It's also a compelling value. Uh, you can often find it on a restaurant list at prices that are much more affordable than some domestic wines. And I'm not gonna get too much into the weeds in terms of production methods, but Santorini is so unique, it's worth a mention. First, there's a lot of volcanic activity on the island, and so the soils are pretty much volcanic soils. Also, there's incredibly strong winds on the island that could be very, very harmful for the grapes. And for that reason, the grapes tend to be grown in vines that are in basket form. So rather than being on a trellis or being upright, they actually wind the vines into the shape of a basket and every year's growth will be another ring around the basket and then the grapes are protected right in the middle of that basket and so they don't get damaged by the wind. Really a fascinating thing to see. Also, they've never had phylloxera in Santorini. There's numerous old vines that are still planted on their original roots, uh, some of which are well over 100 years old. So they can produce some very, very intense concentrated fruit. Some of those are particularly worth seeking out. My second wine takeaway is Vinsanto, which is a dessert wine oftentimes made from Assyrtico. Vinsanto is made from late harvested grapes. So the grapes are allowed to remain on the vines where they intensify and concentrate the flavors and sugars. Following harvest, they're actually laid out in the sun and they're allowed to dry for a couple of weeks. And what this does is that it, it dries up some of the water that is in the grapes. And so it intensifies the flavors and the sugars and results in a very, very intense concentrated wine. After fermentation, these wines are aged for at least two years in oak 
but many of the high-end wines are aged even longer than that. What you end up with is a sweet wine that has flavors of raisins, coffee, and chocolate, and is really, really very outstanding, and I enjoyed it very much. One of my favorite examples was the Estate Argyros Fiensanto, uh, the one that they had with the, the longest amount of aging. My last takeaway is Carinaca Brut Rosé. This is a sparkling rosé that's made from the Zeno Mavro grape. For those of you who know, I know that you're there screaming, saying, Carinaca is from Macedonia, it's not from Santorini, and you're right. However, I needed three wine-related takeaways for my Santorini trip, and while it's not actually produced on Santorini, I did enjoy this sparkling wine while I was in Santorini, and so that counts. This is really an excellent sparkling wine that can be purchased for around $30 retail in the United States. It's a very dry wine that has a complex combination of citrus, strawberry, Berry, dried cranberry, and floral aromatics. It's definitely an excellent value and one well worth seeking out. I know I'm generally a fan of, of champagne and not so much sparkling wine that comes from other places, but this one in particular is really outstanding and worth seeking out. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please smash that like button and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the next one. I come out with videos like this at least once a week. Until then, drink well.